Hey, Brad, just overall, how happy are you with this uh, first day? Ecstatic. Uh, obviously, starting with the selection of Enrique, getting a type of guy that can play double plus defense and center field, blazing speed on the base paths, high contact, be a catalyst to the top of the lineup, and then adding a couple of ACC performers right after that. Really happy with how things turned out for the first night. Go ahead. Hey, Brad, with uh, Mac, what kind of player could you see him developing into, and what did you like about his skill set there at uh, 53? Yep. We had a high interest in Mac last year. Yeah, I think the first thing that really stands out about his game in general is just how good of an athlete he is. He's a plus runner. He has a plus arm. He split some time this year at between third base and center field, and we're ultimately going to look to kind of capitalize on his athleticism, give him some reps out in center field, but also – make sure that he's also getting reps at third base as far as versatility is concerned. As I mentioned, as far as uh, the production this year offensively with North Carolina, over 20 doubles, 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases, that just kind of goes to show you the type of athlete that we're getting here. We're really excited to add him here to our farm system. Rich? Hey, Brad. Uh, you, take, you, you take a picture on the first day, Jackson Baumeister, what uh, what made him the pitcher to take on the first day? Yeah, Rich, we, we've we uh, been monitoring Jackson for a while now, ever since high school. We've always liked the arm that he's had. He runs it up uh, up to 98, sits at 93, 94. I think the thing that really uh, made us intrigued with Jackson is how the fastball plays. We think that we can maximize his arsenal by having him pitch further up in the zone with his fastball. He also has a complete repertoire as far as a starting pitcher is concerned a sweepy slider that is conducive to getting chases for right-handed hitters. Curveball is a little bit of a softer breaker, but we think we can add some velocity to improve that. And we're going to also look to up his repetition of his changeup. So just really intrigued overall as far as, you know, the arm strength and the secondary weapons are concerned. On. Brad, I know these are all group efforts and all the evaluations, but specifically on the hitters, I know you had the hitting coaches in there looking at these guys. How important is their feedback and sign-off, knowing that they're the ones who are going to work with them going forward? It's monumentally important, and that's one thing that you know we've always tried to do is to continue to get their input, see if they have any concerns, or in this case, if they really like what they see on film, what they can do to, as far as tweaking and helping these guys get a little bit better, whether it's maybe increasing some power production or maybe helping ultimately with swing decisions. But so far, it's been an instrumental part of our process, and so far, so good. Knock on wood, obviously. Jacob? Uh, back to – hey, Brad. Uh, back to Enrique. I know, of course, you mentioned his defense and his speed, but what is it about his overall game on offense that, that you guys were uh, really attracted to? Yeah, I think whenever you have a player that comes into the SEC and walks more than he strikes out for three consecutive years – that's the type of guy that you want hitting at the top of your lineup. So the fact that he is very disciplined, has elite contact skills, and, you know, 80 grade speed to go with it. You know, I know in the past few drafts, we've taken a lot of guys that have, you know, some power production, and this is a little bit different look, but having that guy at the top of the lineup to wreak havoc on the base pass and, and play a, a double plus defense grade in center field really makes you feel good as far as the entire package that you're getting. He's the type of guy that, you probably hate playing against and, you know, love having him if he's on your team. Hey, Brad, um, a big investment in, in college uh, pitchers today. What was it about this uh, pitcher class that, that had you guys pretty intrigued? Yeah, I think what we were able to walk away with today is guys that have some ability right now as far as, you know, their pitches that we really like, whether it's the metrics, the velocity, the breaking balls, but also the ability to add or potentially refine some of these guys' deliveries to maximize their arsenals. I've talked about it before in the past, you know, a big effort as far as uh, getting our player development staff involved has increased year in, year out here. And as far as being overly thorough with this draft class specifically, not only the pitchers, but the position players as well, I think we've done a really good job as far as taking a deep dive, not only at the top of the draft, but also players that we liked, obviously, on day two, and then also some guys for tomorrow. So Pretty excited about the group that we got here, and uh, we're really looking forward to getting them going and getting down in Florida. Jake Rill. Hey, Brad. I know Kiefer uh, Lord had a little bit of a different path to college baseball. Um, when was he put on your radar, and um, what, what do you like about his arm? 
Yeah, we are aware of Kiefer. Obviously, it's a tremendous story. The fact, you know, that he is pretty much self-made as far as developing his velocity. Um, a lot of these guys, I think I want to say four out of the four out of the guys that we drafted today, we met with at the draft combine. And it allowed us to kind of get an opportunity to talk with them, see what they put the work that they put in on their own and also things that they need to continue to work on. So he's one of them, obviously, the fact that he was able to build a velocity like he did and you know, through his fastball, I want to say over 70% of the time this year at University of Washington. So a big focal point for us with him is going to continue to work on implementing his slider more often, but also let him use his curveball and change up increasingly with each outing that he's going to get on with us. Rich Dubroff. Hey, Brad, so far you, you've taken exclusively college players. What is it about college players that that makes you guys favorites so much? Well, Rich, I, I think the one thing I can kind of hang my hat on is obviously the data of that is available. That kind of add, helps us add to our conviction that our scouts see in the field. Um, it just so happened as far as how the board was constructed that we ended up with a lot of college players thus far, uh, at least in the 2023 class. But we do keep an open mind, not only with college players, but also high school as well. But to your point, we do have a lot of more data to go off of whether it's historical data as far as these guys' performance year in, year out in summer leagues, but also at school. And we also have a lot of data that, you know, we will get from third-party vendors that we like to key and hone in on that is always at our disposal as well to kind of add to our conviction in addition to what our scouts see on the field. Steve Molesky. Brad, a couple signing questions. First, what is the date to sign the players by? Um, second, do you think there'll be some quick signings and third, you think you can go 12 for 12 with what's happened so far? We hope so. The The sign deadline will be at the end of July before the trade deadline. I, want, I believe it's June 26th. And ideally, we would hope to sign all these guys. That is always the plan. Um, and we know we're going to get to work on that right away after we uh, make our selections tomorrow. Jacob Meyer. A couple of the pitchers that you drafted have pretty extensive experience in college pitching in relief, especially I think Teddy Sharkey um, was a reliever this past season. Is the goal for them to, to stay as relief pitchers or is, do you envision any of them becoming starters when they begin their pro careers? Sure. Yeah. I think in Teddy's case, we had our pitching coaches take a look at him and they're very bullish on his delivery. It's a high energy delivery. He repeats it. Well, he already has three pitches that he throws for strikes. He's aggressive. He goes right at guys. So ideally, in Teddy's situation, we would like to hopefully extend him and let him go a couple of innings. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, the idea would be to develop him long term as a starting pitcher, but that is something that we would like to strive for and specifically with Teddy. Anish Vasudevan. Um, speed seemed like a big part of the choices you made yesterday. Um, what do you like from the outfielders today um, rather than the arms you got? Yeah, I think if there is one theme here, it is the fact that these guys are all very skilled defenders in center field. They have plus speed. They can they can run extremely well. They have the instincts to play center field. I think every single one of those guys that we we selected, we had plus run times on from our scout side of things. And also the guys that did the combine, we had Nick White, um, our strength conditioning coordinator, go down there and take a look at all these guys as well. And he also provided feedback that was immensely helpful in this process. So definitely they are very skilled defenders. That's a big thing for us. We want these guys to be able to track down the ball quickly in gaps and get the ball back in the infield as quickly as possible. So very excited as far as the upside is concerned with these guys in the outfield. Steve? Brad, among the last couple of guys you took today, is there anything – uh, particularly intriguing or a tool or something that jumped out at you uh, amongst any of that group? I think the one name that we are excited about getting him where we did, actually we're, we're ecstatic that we got all these guys where we did, but is, is Jake Cunningham. Jake was on our radar last year at UNC Charlotte. He is a tool shed. He has double plus raw power and BP. He's a plus runner. And again, he's one of those guys that has uh, instincts for center field. And we actually had Jake out here at a workout at Camden Yards a few weeks back leading up to the draft. And he was up to 111 uh, with Wood. So we are very excited, obviously, to get all these guys. But I think to get Jake where we got him coming into the year, he did battle a little bit of injuries. 
And we're very excited that we were ultimately end up to get Jake where we did. So, but again, he's a very interesting guy. I think Tavian's also very interesting, uh, versatile defender at Arkansas. He played primarily center field, but also played second base at Kansas. So the arrows point up on a lot of these guys and we can't wait to get them, uh, get them into our system to work with our PD folks. Last question is from Jacob. With some of the college guys that you took, you, you know, you took a couple smaller college guys, people from Dallas Baptist and some conference USA players. How do you balance, you know, obviously the experience that they have playing a pretty high level of baseball, but it's not, you know, the SEC or the ACC. How do you balance college players that are maybe playing, you know, in yeah, that's of- that. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off, Jacob. Yeah, no, that that's a great question, and you know, that is that does kind of come. Um, or I guess goes into the realm of our interview process with these guys. We like to talk about what they're already doing. What's their throwing program look like? We ask them questions that are specific to our process and kind of see where they are, what they need to work on, how far they need to go, or if there's something that we need to kind of instill in their process already. So a lot of these guys, depending upon you know what school they play at, they may not have the level of instruction or the regimen that a lot of these other big schools do, like you mentioned the SEC, ACC, but there's also outlets where these guys can go, whether it's train facilities that will teach them those skills needed. So it is kind of difficult to kind of give a broad answer to that, but it would ultimately depend case upon case basis. But um, these are guys that we, we vetted. We did a lot of work on with our player development, our pitching coaches and they all seem to think that the upside for all these guys is uh, extremely encouraging. 